Welcome to Book Root Readings, your channel for classic, nature, and living children's books. Click the subscribe button to be notified of new readings. Enjoy the story! Hannah's Cold Winter Written by Trish Marks Illustrations by Barbara Knutson When I was a child, Sunday was my favorite day. Papa would wake up rested after working all week at the paprika mill outside of town. For six days, summer and winter, he would pull heavy bags of dried peppers off the farmer's carts and haul them into the gaping mouth of the paprika factory, where they were ground into a fine spice. Papa used to say that the mouth of the factory was the only thing that was harder to feed than the mouths of his three children. But that was on the six days during the week. On the seventh day, on Sunday, Papa could sleep until the sun woke him up. We would wait for him to come into the kitchen, dressed in his suit and his red bow tie, and the gold cufflinks his grandfather had given to him when he got married. Well, well, he would say, trying to look stern. I suppose I shall have no peace today. I suppose I shall have to wait to sit by the fire and drink your mother's good coffee. Your faces tell me you want to go out today. We had been holding our breath, hoping Papa would say that. We had traveled all over Budapest and sometimes the villages in the country on these Sunday outings with Papa and Mama, and each of us had a special statue or building or park. I loved the carved stone lions guarding the bridge over the Danube River. My sister begged to go to the baths at the Gellert Hotel and see the painted tiles and feel the steam rising from the water that bubbled up from the ground. My older brother, Gabor, who had pocket money, would run across the street from the baths to the market where the farmers brought their eggs and tomatoes and chickens. He would soon be lost in the maze of cheese stalls and spice counters, but he always came out with candy for us all. There was one place that was a favorite for all of us, but we never asked Papa to take us there because it cost money. We knew that when there were extra forints after buying Mama's sugar and butter and the cloth for new pants and new shoes for whichever one of us had grown too much, Papa would stand in the kitchen and put his hand in his pocket and jingle his coins and smile a big smile. Then we knew it was a zoo Sunday. The zoo in our town was down a big hill and across the river from where we lived. Papa would lift Eva onto his shoulders and clasp my hand in his. And with Gabor running ahead, we would walk down the hill and over the river into the city of Pest. Coming home, we would take the cog train that groaned its way up the hill, but going down was a game of chase, of hide and seek, and always of Papa's riddles. Little Tibor, he would ask me, those favorite lions of yours on the Lanchid Bridge. Tell me, what is missing from the lions who guard the bridge of Lanchid? I knew the answer. I knew the tongues were what was missing, but I always let Papa tell me and we would listen to his hearty laugh. Soon we would reach the zoo. The balloon men and ice cream ladies lined the streets in front of the entrance. Hurry, hurry, one of them would shout. It is feeding time for Hannah. Hannah was a hippopotamus. Our city was famous for its hippos. They loved the warm springs that came naturally out of the ground and they grew fat and healthy and had many babies that were sent to zoos all over the world. Our city had built them a beautiful house in the zoo. It looked like a miniature palace with copper domes and a large pool in front and separate rooms with pools on the inside. 
trees and flowers were planted around the hippo house, and the water was always kept clean. Hannah was a special hippo. She liked being in the outside pool, close to the people. She often slept with one eye open, hoping that she would see the cart loaded with grass and hay creaking down the curved path. While the other hippos rested, she would get up just when the cart reached the giraffe house next door. Hannah was the only hippo who was ready, mouth open, when the zookeeper had his first pitchfork full of hay poised in midair. She would keep her mouth open until the keeper could get no more hay in. Then, as fast as a hippo can, she would close her mouth. In a flash, it seemed, her mouth was open again and all the hay was gone. The crowd would laugh, Papa loudest of all. That was one riddle even he could not figure out. One winter, the river between the twin towns of Buddha and Pest froze. It was a big river, and the winter had to be very cold for so much water to freeze. But no one talked about it much, as something much more important was happening to us. There was a war going on, all over our part of Europe and beyond. There were now soldiers in our town, on the banks of the river, and the soldiers on either side were fighting each other. The people would shake their heads, go to their work, then come home and stay inside. Papa no longer took us out on Sundays. We sat by the hearth and studied our lessons and mended our worn clothing and listened to the radio, hoping for better news. But the soldiers stayed, and the days grew colder. Our meat ran out, then our potatoes. Papa would come home with only a few onions and carrots from the market, and with these vegetables, and sometimes with some thin chickens our neighbors gave us, Mama always managed to stretch our soup pot. We were so busy thinking of our own hollow stomachs that Papa's news came as a surprise. The animals in the zoo are hungry too, he said. I heard that because of the soldiers, no food is coming into the town, and the animals need more food when winters are this cold. We thought of Hannah, and of her wide grin, and of how much hay her mouth could hold. We thought of her baby, born that summer, and of all of our famous hippos in the zoo. We went to bed that night feeling helpless and sad. In the morning, Papa was in the kitchen, in his suit. His hands were in his pockets, and he had a big smile on his face. We are going to the zoo, he said, but not for fun. We are going to save the zoo today. If you children get dressed and come with me, I will show you how. We scrambled to our rooms, and in no time, we're back in the kitchen. Mama wrapped mufflers around our necks. The way she looked, we knew she and Papa had stayed up late thinking of a plan to save the hippos, and that it was a good one. On the way out of our house, Papa picked up our straw doormat and an old pair of straw slippers. Gabor, Ava, and I whispered together, but we knew Papa would share his secret only when he was ready. On the way to the zoo, Papa told us what he and Mama had planned. We are going to the zookeeper the first thing, he said, and we will take him to the hippo house and show him the plan will work. When we got to the hippo house, we could see a frozen pond and bare trees around it. The hippos were huddled inside for warmth and shelter from the wind. Hannah no longer looked our way, no longer slept with one eye open. We could hardly tell which hippo she was. Papa walked up to the hunched animals and gently put the straw mat under the nose of one. The hippo moved but did not eat. So Papa got a pitchfork and broke the mat up and put the pieces of the old mat on the end of the fork. When Papa offered our tattered mat to the hippo, the old hippo raised himself up and opened his mouth 
and the mat was gone in a twinkling. Well done, said the zookeeper. Well done. After that day, on cold nights and on gray mornings, in mist and in fog and in snow, an old cart pulled by an older horse traveled the streets of Buddha and Pest. Feed the hippos, straw for the hippos, the driver's voice echoed through the streets. The people of my town ran out of their doors and piled their old straw mats and slippers and hats onto the cart. The cart was filled time and again, and the old horse faithfully pulled each load to Hannah and the other hippos at the zoo. By the end of the winter, the people of Budapest had given 9,000 hats and mats and slippers to the hippos. The hippos did not grow fat, but the straw kept them alive through that cold and frightening winter. The war in our town ended that spring. Now I am all grown up and the cold winter and the soldiers are only a memory. But the hippos in Budapest are still living in their palace and wallowing in the warm springs. I have traveled far since those days. Every time I see a hippo in a zoo someplace in the world, I think of Hannah and of Papa and the brave people of my town who saved their hippos during the war with 9,000 straw slippers. Author's Note This story is based on a true incident. During World War II, 1939 through 45, Hungary experienced its coldest winters in years. Even the Danube River, dividing the twin cities of Buda and Pest, froze. The German troops were on one side, and the Russian troops held the other side. People were starving, as were the animals in the zoo. But Hungary's famous hippos, who flourished in the warm waters that flowed from the springs in Budapest, were fed 9,000 straw slippers, doormats, and hats, donated by the people of Budapest. The hippos survived the winter and the war. The author wishes to thank Tibor Fulop, the American Hungarian Library, New York, John Otterpool, Suad McCoy, to Patrick, Molly, Annie, Jody, and Court, who helps me visit the hippos, TM, to Tandy, who likes hippos, BK.